Hey Persian guy, this is my second attempt at this video. My first one was 18 minutes long and I think I need to condense some things down. Uh, first, I know it's been a couple of days since you've posted your video and I've been a pretty busy person this week and so it's taken me a little bit to get a video back up here uh, in response to you. But I did want to respond to your racial profiling uh, comments. There were some other comments that I probably won't comment on the fighting fire with fire. We do whatever we need to do to uh, defend ourselves. I choose to use that energy that they are putting out there, uh, hateful energy, either verbally or physically, and kind of turn it around and use it against them. Take their negative energy, turn it into a positive energy, and throw it back at them. And I have found that uh, either in defending myself verbally or defending myself physically, that is the best method for me. You use what you use and that's fine. I'm not going to say that you're wrong for doing that, uh, but I think if more people turn negative energy into positive energy, we would have a more happy, peaceful world. Um, and that's on the small scale to the big scale. Racial profiling. I think you brought up a word in your comments that uh, describes what what you are experiencing more than racial profiling and that's stereotyping. When we stereotype a person we're basing our opinion or our perception on them um, based on what we believe they are. And that, that can be based on a visual perception, uh, based on a, a, um, a perception of what they say, how they behave, many things go into stereotyping somebody. With your name, Persian guy. If I, if I assume that you are Muslim from that name, I am stereotyping you. I'm not racial profiling you. Uh, races are profiled just based on the color of their skin. And it happens in the United States probably more to black people and Hispanic people than it does to people of Middle Eastern descent. Um, and if people of Middle Eastern descent are racially profiled, it's usually not to profile them as a Muslim or a Muslim extremist or a terrorist. Uh, it is usually in the marketplace, you know, that um, people from Middle Eastern descent own convenience stores, or people of Middle Eastern descent drive taxi cabs, or they talk funny, you know, or I, it, those are the types of things that that I believe are, are racially profiling Middle Easterners. As far as Muslim extremists go and being a terrorist, those types of things can happen in a stereotypical way. When you wore you know, your, your hoodie and your sunglasses and you were looking kind of uh, menacing, that can attract a particular type of perception that you're a terrorist, that you're a bad guy. And I think I could, you know, probably look like a bad guy as well, but not be Middle Eastern. But I think racial profiling is something that happens when policemen pull over a car that may have uh, a group of uh, black occupants and pull over the car because they believe those black occupants have done something illegal, that's criminal. And that happens all the time. Um, in my town here, Hispanics are targeted quite a bit and pulled over just because they're Hispanic. I don't think that happens very often with Middle Easterners as far as being profiled by law enforcement. And profiling is something that happens uh, in that type of environment, in a law enforcement environment or um, in, in a, a security type of environment. It doesn't really happen on the street. On the street, that would be more of stereotyping people or just being a racist. You know, if I don't like a person just because they're black, I'm being a racist. If I don't like a person just because they're Middle Eastern, I'm being racist. Uh, but to bring in the, the term Muslim, in fact, you even mentioned that you can't you cannot tell if somebody is Muslim until they tell you they are Muslim. And that's true. 
And given that, it's very difficult to do a racial profiling based on a religion. And that's kind of my take on all of that. Is it correct? It's correct to me. Is it correct to you? That's for you to decide, not for me to decide. Um, wow, I've only gone five minutes. That's pretty good. <clears throat> the, uh, the Inmans that were on the airplane that were removed from the airplane and detained for a number of hours, they were not profiled because they were Middle Eastern. They were profiled because they prayed on the airplane. Five of them stood on the airplane and prayed to Allah. That would give the people on the plane more concern than if it was just five Middle Easterns that got onto the airplane. Why? Because there were people who took four airplanes out of the sky and during the time they did that there was a lot of praying going on. That would identify those people as Muslim. The prayers would identify them as Muslim. Not because they're Middle Eastern. I would submit that it could have been Asians that stood up and prayed to Allah and they could have had the exact same thing happen to them because that was religious profiling not racial profiling. And, you know, it's caused, and I think this relates to your, your point about I could fly into Iran and be safe because Iran has not had, you know, 19 Americans fly airplanes into buildings or hijack airplanes. If Iran had that happen to their country, the circumstances might be different. And I hope that never happens. I don't want that to happen. But I think given the circumstances of 9-11, this is where this country is at. Is it right? Probably not. Are there people who are fearful of it happening again? Yes. Do we need to understand that fear? Yes. Do we need to address that fear and try to calm it? Yes. Um, there's a lot of ways to do that. You speaking out in defense of Muslims does that type of thing, but it's not necessarily going to quell the fear. And I think that's where a lot of it comes from, is fear. Yes, ignorance plays a part. Ignorance is something that causes fear. Uh, ignorance is something that causes hate. You know, so learning about one another is the best thing that we can do. And yes, I would, I would love to travel to Tehran. I would love to travel to Cairo or Damascus. Um, I have a, an acquaintance that I've met a couple of times. He's not a friend. He's just somebody that I've met. He's kind of a superstar in, in a realm that, I, that I'm in called Belly Dance. And he's a drummer for the Belly Dance Superstars. And his name is Assam. And he's from Syria. And I would love to travel around the Middle East with him and go to drum shops and and some of the places in the Middle East, and I love Middle Eastern music. I think it's some of the best music on the planet. Um, would I be fearful as an American traveling there? I, w I would probably sometimes feel uncomfortable, you know, but would it be valid? I don't know. I wouldn't know until I got there. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to get back with you and, and touch on a couple of these things. I know I'm probably running out of time. Uh, so, uh, it was good hearing from you, and I, again, apologize for my late response, but hopefully we can keep the lines of communication open and, and get a little bit better understanding uh, where each other are coming from. So, take care.